and welcome to building richer people experiences with Profile API on Microsoft Graph. My name is Kevin Bellinger, and I work in the People Services team, which is based here in the Microsoft Development Center in Oslo, Norway. In this session, we will talk about some of the pain points the Profile API is addressing. We will review the new profile data model, and we'll highlight some examples where you gave us feedback after Ignite, which has really helped us evolve that model. We'll highlight how you can provide feedback uh, prior to GA later this year. And then we'll touch very briefly on some partner and developer opportunities before rounding off with a great demonstration on how easy it is to get started with the Profile API by my colleague, David. So the challenges we're working on addressing here really come from 25 years of siloed standalone products. This created inconsistencies and put the burden on users to update everywhere. There are also attempts to solve this, creating sync jobs or pipelines. But these jobs themselves, they were prone to issues. And when they broke down, the inconsistencies came back. So what we increasingly saw were minor issues evolving into more visible inconsistencies in the suite. Phone numbers or job titles not getting updated in one place. Uh, Profile photos updating well after the fact or not at all. So a few years ago, a small team was set up to address the problems that were cropping up and to help us move into a services first world. We started by working to standardize on a rich semantic schema for people that would eventually apply for across all of M365. Then we identified the causes of the majority of our sync issues and set about addressing them with the goal of reducing the inconsistencies where we could across the entire suite. We then set out to reduce the number of places where people data could be stored and mastered until only one silo remained, providing us with a single source of truth for data for people across M365. So moving on to the model that we chose for profile, we added a much richer set of entities to capture and represent data about your users on. Each person entity is modeled as a collection on the profile and allows really good flexibility when it comes to storing different information about your users. If you're working on ML, there are built-in capabilities for storing confidence scores and other feature data natively built into all profile entities. Another thing I want to highlight is some of the changes we made based on your feedback. Skill proficiencies is one of the entities in the profile. And what we heard was that people wanted to be able to represent not only skills they know, but skills they could mentor someone in or skills they hope to learn. When it comes to language proficiency, we heard loud and clear that representing proficiency is great, but being able to represent your comprehension, your spoken, your written, your reading comprehension uh, was really what mattered because that often differed a lot from person to person. So if we think about some of the partner opportunities, I think an area that hasn't been fully explored or innovated so far has been surfacing the hidden connections between people within organizations, in particular large organizations. Having richer profiles that contain more information about your users allows for greater discovery inside the org and the surfacing of these relationships, be that through people that attended the same university or highlighting the shared platforms that the users within your org are using and might want to follow each other or get to know each other better on. Or it could be for simply expressing your interests or your personality as a way of showing uh, who you are as a person and what you stand for, making the workplace seem a little more human. So building a great profile curation experience for your company or your customers encourages users to be much more expressive about who they are and fosters a greater sense of inclusion and well-being. The richer the data, the richer experience that can be built. So here are some links that can help you get started with the API. Try it out in Graph Explorer using the link. Uh, the content is there and available, and we're using the, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit in order to show you the demo that is coming. In closing, uh, we're still listening. 
We're still looking for the feedback and the quality of feedback we got in the first round has really encouraged us and we want you to reach out. So please open an issue on GitHub, provide comments on uh, the documentation, use the email address that provides a direct line to the product group. And we are very responsive and we look forward to having a great dialogue with you. Now I'd like to hand it over to my colleague, David, who's going to come and give us a great demonstration on building a, an app from scratch uh, using the Graph Toolkit and uh, React. So please, David, uh, if you can come and uh, thank you everyone for your time. Thank you, Kevin. That was great. Hi, I'm David. Uh, I work in the People Services team in Microsoft here in Oslo. And today I want to show you how to build rich people-centric application using the Profile API on Microsoft Graph with uh, the Graph Toolkit. So before we begin, I, I just want to jump into the Graph Explorer. And you can, you can try this with your own account. You can simply authenticate uh, in, in Graph Explorer. And if you're unfamiliar with it, it's essentially a great tool where you can try out all the different graph APIs available. So in this specific demo, I will be using the beta endpoint of the profile API. So I can simply change it to beta and go to slash me slash profile. And there we have, uh, there we have uh, my profile. And essentially, what you will see if you do this with your own account is that you will very likely have some data in there already. What we do is we sync in sources from Active Directory, SharePoint, et cetera. So to provide you with a sort of a baseline profile from the beginning that you can then enhance with your own data. So let's switch over to my demo application here. This is a very simple web application built using React uh, and the Graph Toolkit, along with the Graph SDK. So essentially, in this specific part of it, I'm only, I'm only focusing on the project section of the profile. As you can see here, each tile in this, in this web app represents one project on my profile. So first thing first, before we can start calling Microsoft Graph, we first need to be authenticated and authorized to, to see the person's data. In my case, I'm using a web component from the Graph Toolkit. And this allows me to very easily add a authentication provider. As we can see here in the code, I've essentially imported the Microsoft Graph Toolkit and this makes our authentication code incredibly clean and simple. In addition, I've added a uh, authentication provider and attached my client ID for my, for my application. And last but not least, I've added a login component. This is a component that would show a button if the user signs in. So let's look into one of the projects. As you can see here, this project reflects the schema of the, of the profile, where we have a description, a start date, end date, a role, role summary, a list of sponsors and colleagues. And here, I once again used a couple of the web components from the Graph Toolkit. In this case, the people and person components. So I customized the, the people card a little bit here to show also the skills, projects, and interests. And in addition to this, I've also added a agenda component that will automatically show me my next meeting that is relevant for this specific project. Now, let's create a new project in our profile. So here I will simply enter some, some data, and this data will be stored to our profile as a new project. So as you can see here, for the project entity, we have things like titles, descriptions, categories, start and end dates, titles, summaries, uh, sponsors. And again, 
here for the sponsors and and participants, I've once again used the people picker uh, from the from the web components, which allows me to easily fetch and select these the, the people in my organization. Now, once this has been saved, we can again head back to the Graph Explorer, and let's go to the profile projects and specifically search with an OData query. We'll essentially filter on the display name for consumer electronics marketing, which is, which is what we just stored the project as. And there we have it. Uh, this is essentially the data that we just stored. In addition, we also store some metadata and other information. Um, and so now we've just stored our first custom entity into the profile. And you can do this on your own profiles or your organization's profiles. So let's head over and look what the code looks like here. Thanks to the, to the Graph Toolkit, we have a global providers where we essentially have our authentication providers available to us. This allows us to pull out a graph client, which we can use to call the, the APIs in Microsoft Graph. What's convenient about this is that we are already authenticated and have the authorization and everything in place. So it's a very easy way to get going with, with calling the graph for your custom code as well. So this essentially allows us to also use this information in our other experiences, in Microsoft experiences as well. So what this means is that we can go for, now we can, for example, go to SharePoint. And if we search for this specific project, we will see that the user that we just added this to its profile will show up in, in the search within SharePoint. So right now, we are enabling more and more internal products to also take advantage of the profile API and its data. So going forward, you will very likely see other experiences being able to use this data as well. So I would highly recommend you go try out the new profile API on Microsoft Graph, and please provide us any feedback that you may have or ask us any questions. We would be happy to answer them. Thank you.